Hey guys, Mike Chin just got into Toronto. It is about almost 11 p.m. Drove all the way here. Didn't really get a chance to stop for dinner. So dinner is gonna be the sponsor of this video, Tokyo Treats in Sakurako. This month's theme is Okinawa Retreat. Okinawa, of course, the southernmost region of Japan and where karate was founded. All that fun cultural information plus everything about the snacks right here in the booklet. And with Sakura Box, you'll receive 20 traditional, authentic, artisanal Japanese snacks. Go ahead and make me some tea. Perfect compliment to all the snacks I'm about to eat. This is brown sugar Corinto, one of the most traditional brown sugar snacks in Japan. Oh, this is so good, so good, so good. It's like puffy, sweet little pretzels. Chased out with a little tea. All right, gotta check out this Tokyo Tree box. And this month's theme is Sugo Summer. So box full of summertime favorites, including truffle potato chips, buckwheat soba ramen, instant soba. I've been on a truffle kick lately. And this is absolutely amazing. And with Tokyo Treat, you'll get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only in Japan for a limited time. I gotta try this. Chill soba noodles, one of my favorite Japanese food items. Never had instant soba before, but this definitely scratches the craving niche. Don't cook it too long because noodles are extremely thin. So if you do it right, you're gonna be rewarded with it. noodles with such a great chewy texture and you taste that great wheat flavor in every single bite. Love this. Haven't been able to go to Japan for a few years now, but at least I'm still able to have access to these amazing snacks. Anyway, like I said, biggest difference between Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko. Sakura Ko is all about the traditional, authentic, artisanal snacks. They partner with local Japanese snack makers to share Japanese culture and tradition that have been passed down for sometimes over a hundred years. And Tokyo Treat Box is just full of fun, popular, exclusive, limited edition snacks. And I love the mission of this company to share Japanese culture through the medium of snacking. How amazing is that? And the company is based in Japan. Both these boxes, everything inside is curated directly from Japan, shipped to your door anywhere in the world. So if you want to give this try, use my promo code Mikey to get $5 off your first Sakura Ko box. This is one of my favorite partnerships. And if you guys like Japanese food, Japanese snacks, you're going to love these boxes. All right, I'm going to finish dinner. And then tomorrow, I got a special place I got to show you guys. Good morning, grabbing some breakfast here in Toronto before heading off to the all-you-can-eat Japanese Wagyu Buffet. I haven't had Yunnan noodle soup in such a long time. This place looks so good. So good, it smells so good too. This place, crossing the bridge noodle soup. And this is really exciting. Unlimited rice noodle refills. So this is pretty much a rice noodle soup buffet. The ingredients are here. This is really cool. They made a fish cake into the shape of a fish. There's tofu skin, um, corn, sausage, ham, fatty beef, lettuce, sour cabbage, woodier mushroom, shrimp, a quail egg. Stone bowl has arrived with my broth inside and I asked for some extra fatty beef inside this as well. Rice noodles and this goes in here. Meat goes in first. Cook that. Also got their signature pork burger. This thing looks so juicy. First of all, I got a tomato broth. Mm. Ah, tomato is rich, it's flavorful, a little tart. Drink the soup with some of the noodles. Mm. I love the thick rice noodles. The texture is so smooth and chewy. Oh, it just warms your body right up. Kind of a chilly day here in Toronto right now. Also got the mala spicy flavor one. Ooh. Basically tastes like a lighter, thinner, more drinkable hot pot broth. Mm. 
Oh. The rice noodle goes down so easy. There's so many different textures in here. And meat is one of my favorite noodle dishes. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. Signature pork burger. Awesome. Wow, that is just a melt in your mouth, juicy pork. Take a bite of that. Take a slurp of your noodles. Spicy, soupy, meaty, crunchy, slurp worthy. I mean, I didn't see this place until um, we actually got here because I was actually trying to go to a different place across the street. Then I saw this place and came here instead. But yeah, I wanted this for breakfast. Mm. This is also one of the hottest noodle dishes in China. Mm. Actually, the tomato broth. Ah, put some hot oil in there. I think I like this the best. Pro move, dunk the bun into the broth. This is the place I originally was heading to. This is a clay pot rice, but it's super traditional. And they also make rice noodles here fresh. So got some of that and got a clay pot rice with a salted egg on top. Freshly made chongfen rice noodles. I love it. They also give you sriracha, soy sauce, peanut sauce here, so you can customize your flavors. Mm. For me, a lot of soy, a little spice, and a ton of peanut sauce. Mm. Plump, juicy, light shrimp. Rice noodles are so soft and fresh. Usually when I'm buying this from a cart, it's kind of embarrassing because I ask for a lot of peanut sauce, and it's never enough. I love, love peanut sauce on this dish. No, not as much as I want. Next up, clay pot rice. So this one, I got Chinese lap chun, there's duck, there's fish, there's char siu, and an egg on top. Mix that in with the rice. It pretty much turns this into an egg fried rice with pockets of little crispy rice on the side. Pour some soy sauce on, give it a nice mix, and... Mm. This is so good. Lap chun is always delicious, but it's the crispy rice that makes this pot so delicious. So make sure to scrape all the rice from the side of this clay pot. Mm. The meat is delicious, the rice is fantastic. So young, so fragrant. Again, crispy little pieces on the side to give it a fantastic little crunch. Mm. That's the best part. Love the different types of meats, especially the pork. Look at this. Nice fatty piece right here. That is some rice. First some rice noodle soup, then a clay pot rice. This is about as good and comforting of breakfast as I have had in a long, long time. Oh, that was good. Clay pot rice is good. I think the rice noodle though, that was phenomenal. It's probably one of the best rice noodles I've had. So fresh and plus, as much peanut sauce as you want on there makes such a difference. All right, here we are at Shinta Japanese Barbecue. All you can eat Japanese Wagyu in Australian M9 steaks. So in Australia, they also rate the marbling from zero to nine. And when you come in, there are three different menus black silver and gold this is the best menu so the black menu doesn't have really any wagyu the silver some of course the gold a lot more the price of the black is about 40 canadian dollars silver 95 and gold 139. how many can we order at once oh really yeah nice so which menu are you picking? gold please thank you so they're basically bringing me a, a bit of each that's on the all you can eat wagyu section which has again australian m9 u.s gold grade brisket short rib ox tongue m9 strip loin m9 coral beef m9 ribeye some rare cuts wagyu cuts new zealand rack of lamb scallop garlic scallop jumbo shrimp and foie gras on the bottom is also galbi beef tongue short ribs pork chicken lamb there's seafood clams and sake vegetables side orders appetizers soups and desserts
food has arrived. Rack of lamb, garlic and scallops, king prawn, foie gras, and... Let me show you. There we go. All the premium cuts of beef. This place is all about the Australian Wagyu M9. That's their rating. Australian Wagyu goes from zero to nine, so this is the highest. This is the most marbled. This is gonna melt in your mouth. We got tongue, we got top sirloin, brisket, toro, ribeye. We'll start from this end. Some of the ribeye, some of the brisket and some of the Toro. Look at a piece of this Wagyu. Beautiful. This thing looks like it should be hanging on the wall in a picture frame. So thin and marble. Oh my gosh. Last time I had a Wagyu buffet, like a real marble Wagyu buffet. It was in New York. And after that, I really can't get a reservation again, so. <laughs> but I heard about this place here in Toronto that's supposed to be amazing. So far, this place looks amazing. Like really amazing. And you don't really need to cook this much at all, but I am definitely overcooking some of these pieces. The good thing is, with such a marble piece of meat, you can overcook it a bit, it's still gonna taste good. And as soon as you put it onto the grill, just from all that sizzle, you know how much fat content is on here on the side. They have peppercorn, some chilies, pink Himalayan salt. This stuff is amazing. Really good for your health as well. And this place do have a two hour time limit, so let's move those along. Just a little bit of salt and pepper. Kind of made a little mistake. You don't really need the pepper when you're eating beef that's this marbled. Just a little salt, all you need. And also with Wagyu, let's try a little chili on this. Wow. Especially with something of this quality. It's like watching fireworks. Going to Independence Day, New Year's, Disney, wherever. When you see fireworks, when you see it for the first time, you see fireworks before, it still shakes you a little bit. That's how I feel about Wagyu. I mean, I've had Wagyu before, but having it again after several months is one of those foods that just stirs up the emotions inside you because it is just that good. Some of the cuts are a little more beefy, little less melting your mouth, but this piece right here, oh my gosh, this melts like no other. And I haven't even got to the most snow-like Wagyu yet. This right here, cook it, flip it over. Oh my gosh. Oh, the fire is already rising from the fat content that is in this beef. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that's it. Less than 20 seconds on the grill. This is the beef belly. This is the fattiest part, the most marbled in that set. I mean, look at it. Just look at how beautiful. You can cook it a little longer on the grill. Uh, char it up a little bit because <laughs> it is not gonna be dry no matter how you cook it. Oh my goodness. It, I don't know if you guys can see the fire coming out of this. One little piece, it's just got so much fat. Oh my gosh, it was like spurting juice everywhere too. That's the best piece of the set. Without some salad or something to kind of kill the fattiness, a lot of people won't be able to eat too much of it though. It's so fatty, so good. And this is the rest of the set. There's some tri-tip, some ribeye, rare cut, and chef's cut. So these are gonna be way juicier. Look at that beautiful fat rivering through these cubes of meat. Just gonna go ahead and put in a couple of pieces of the ribeye. The rare cut and chef's cut is gonna be the leanest. I love watching Wagyu cook. I swear if Netflix starts a show or just nothing but Wagyu sitting on a grill, they'd binge you that all day long. Mm. 
just tried the three different cuts. The ribeye, not only melts in your mouth, but such a huge, huge beefy flavor. It's definitely the most flavorful. I feel like the meltiness and the flavor profile, that thing is at the optimal point. Also, it's a cube of meat, so it's so much more juicy than the thin slices. So you bite into that, it's just a burst of delicious, fatty, beefy juice. The other pieces are really beefy. They're leaner, they're still tender, they're very, very beefy. So it's a good range of meat they're serving here, but number one, oh man, nothing beats this. This is the best thing on the menu. So of course, you never had Wagyu before. Wagyu is Japanese cattle, and there's American Wagyu, there's Australian Wagyu. So all Wagyu is Japanese cattle, but Australia, US brought these cattle to their respective countries, and thus you have American Wagyu, Australian Wagyu, wherever else Wagyu. But the M9 Australian, I'll tell you guys, that's pretty much on the same level as A5. So pretty much in terms of buttery beef, you're not gonna get much better than this. I had to order a house shallop. If you want to have Wagyu buffet longevity, do yourselves a favor and order a salad. You need to somehow balance the fattiness of the meat. Otherwise, you're not going to last long. This is the tri-tip. Let's try this thing out. I'm going to go ahead and dump some of that mushroom on here. And with the button mushrooms, I suggest growing it like this a little bit. So with the mushrooms, cook it on the underside first, then flip it over, and basically it's gonna start oozing nice mushroomy juice on top, which is gonna be delicious. The tri-tip, mmm, mmm, wow. Wow, that tri-tip is so good. It didn't look all that marbled, but that thing is just all sorts of melting in my mouth. Mm. All right, let's try some of the other cuts. Uh. Little lamb rib. Put a couple of the giant king prawns on here as well. And some of the scallops and garlic. Oh, also start grilling the fragua. I got something special in mind for that. gonna do a little sprinkle of salt over the mushrooms. The foie gras, take a little bit, put it into my little button mushroom. I've never done that before. I don't know what that's gonna taste like. But I'm thinking it's gonna be good. Use it as a rub because this thing is just basically butter. And rub it all over the meat, the scallops, the shrimp. I have a good feeling about this. Giant, sweet, juicy prime with all the delicious butteriness off the foie gras. You can definitely taste that. Mm. This lamb rib is so juicy. I mean, look at this, it's dripping juice. Again, you can taste the foie gras in the lamb rib. Mm. Maybe one of my favorite restaurants. Bro, you can eat barbecue. Pretty much ever. The meat has quality. Even the seafood has quality. Ooh. Oh, I can't wait to try the mushrooms. They're ready. Oh, that great juice in there with a little bit of foie gras. Dunk it in a tiny bit of salt. That was way better than I thought. A little foie gras in that butter mushroom. First of all, I always like barbecuing little butter mushrooms like this. That little, little bit of juice that came in the middle. That's so good. You get all that juice plus that buttery awesomeness of the foie gras. Absolutely amazing. I haven't tried the beef tongue yet. A thick cut of tongue. Some people don't like it. Mm. But don't cook it too long, otherwise it gets a little bit hard to swallow. All right, gotta finish this off and go for a second round. So, cheers.
in a bit. A few moments later. Went through about three, four orders of scallops. It's just dipping that in a foie gras is just masterful. Final assessment of this place. So the gold menu comes out to be about 118 US dollars. I've said this before, the last all you can eat A5 Wagyu buffet I was at. A5 Wagyu a la carte for a steak or even thin slices can easily run you over hundred bucks per order. So for me, this all you can eat for that price, that's worth it. Also, there's so much other stuff on the menu. The seafood is nice. Lawn is good. The scallops delicious. The foie gras, fantastic. So personally, I love this place. And you get ice cream in the end. Sauce of ice cream. Mm. Pretty good first day here in Toronto. And as always, all the places I went to, listen down below for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.